today we're going to plant something in this cardboard box other than a squash because i know a lot of you are not going to do squash i love my zucchini i do everything with it but today we're going to do something different and you're going to see exactly how i fill these boxes up and how i get it ready and how i plant in it and there's multiple ways you do it your way take a tip from me and then run with it and do whatever works for you so let's get this going or let's see what i already did i'm trying to beat the sun it's in the morning i am still working on my box garden i'm really happy with all this hi everybody it's robbie from southern california look how gorgeous this is <gasps> thinking it went through the heat and everything yesterday and we're going to be another 100 degrees today all is good protecting those who are very young they're going to be a little bit slow right now because of the heat because they have a small root system so they really struggle during the day with the heat see i'm working really fast before the sun comes up over the horizon completely all right so here i'm going to put some more leaves i collected some leaves in the garden which is a good thing in the heat. You don't want to leave stuff on the plant that looks like this, especially if you're in a hot area. Because keep in mind, your plant is still trying to feed these leaves, give it water and take care of it. If you're not going to eat it and it doesn't need it, the best thing to do is remove it and either compost it right away. And if you're not ready to compost it, then go ahead and just take them off and throw them somewhere and forget about them till later. All right, let me get this done. The wind is starting to blow. Get this going. Okay, I'm racing against time because the sun is getting hotter and hotter. All right, this I'm just gonna top with soil that came out of other containers. So yeah, I just took it out of other totes. And then I may put some potting soil in one of the boxes, just so you can see how it grows in potting soil. Potting soil is fine too. I'm just trying to save money. Right now, all these containers, all these boxes cost me nothing. It's all leaves and stuff from the garden that I collected. And this cost me nothing as far as soil. It's all kitchen scraps, leaves, weeds, branches. You've seen it. That's what I put in there. So it really cost me absolutely nothing. And then here is, you know, it's already filled up with weeds and leaves, these. So what I'm doing is I'm topping a few more leaves. You can never have too many leaves, but you don't want to put too many branches on the top because you want to be able to dig in there and put your plants in there. That's all. It won't hurt the plants. Branches and all that, it makes space for roots to get around. It keeps it from caking up. It creates a lot of air pockets for earthworms, the microbes. You don't want a solid block of soil. And that's what happens a lot of times with potting soil. As you use it within a few months, it turns into a block. This won't because it's all still like nature breaking down. But I put the leaves on the top because underneath it's got all the branches. And this is, let's see if I've got it. Well, this is tree colored. And I, I just took the stems off here because we're on the top. So the stems are off and it's just the leaves. Now here you'll see the stems because I'm going to put some soil from a you know, from another, from another tote, and then I may put some more leaves on top. This is an actual real paper cut. You rarely find them, but there's no plastic in there. Completely real. Okay, so I'm ready to start getting this together, and you can watch me put it together. So here what you're watching me do is I'm just taking all the matter I've got in my wheelbarrow, and it's basically soil I've collected around the yard from other totes right now and I don't want a lot of heavy pieces of branches or bark in there because after all we're going to be putting plants in it and it's hard to dig with all that so I'm just kind of topping it over and covering all the leaves that are in there because the leaves will break down the leaves will be nothing in a matter of a couple weeks so here I'm just topping everything off that you just saw so I can get ready to plant. Now here what I'm doing is I'm done. See, I've just got leaves. These are gonna be gone in a matter of days almost. I'm just covering the leaves.
If I find a big piece of wood I don't want, like a, I just push it off to the side. some leaves or some rocks get in there and the leaves are on the top, they're going to disappear. So don't worry about it. I think we're done. This I'm going to add a few more leaves on top. I because it's so full of stems, I'm just going to add the leaves. I don't need to add the big stems because I don't want to be digging through the dirt with it, the soil. I'm going to put the stems on the bottom. I can. Don't worry about it if you want to. It just makes it easier when you're digging a hole and planting things to not have the stems and just have the leaves. Do one more light cover. And then now only it. Brown leaves. Green leaves, yellow leaves, doesn't matter. Okay, all I need to get is a little bit more soil from another tote, or I can use potting soil here if I wanted to. And then we do one more thing, and then we are ready to plant. I just want to make sure I've got some leaves on the top so the earthworms come around the roots as well in the beginning. And it also builds your soil. And after all, if you look under a tree, there's always leaves, right? I think that's enough. Believe you me, everything's in there. Now I have to get it all watered in before I plant. So that's it. Make sure you water it before you plant the oldest, you know, in case it was dry. It will all incorporate really good. And then you're ready to plant. So here's how I would plant the tomato in a box. I'm going to plant this tomato that is long overdue. I'm going to get it out of the cup. Let's get it out of the cup first. It is really overdue. I'm going to move it over for a minute. This one is called Super Sweet 100s. Put that there. Now I'm going to put it right in the middle. Remember, I got my leaves and everything there. I just don't want any too much wood and bark in there. So if there's anything too big in the way, I can either move it. And I'm going to dig a big hole. Now, that's good. So now what I could do is add a handful of potting soil. It's a nice medium. That's what it's been used to growing in. I can add some more. It's just potting soil. The seedling, that plant is, it's not a seedling, it's a young plant from the nursery. It's used to growing in potting soil. Okay, now we're going to get that in there. You could even put in a little water if you want. Because this way you know it's going to start right away with water. The leaves down here. Okay. Now, I'm not a barrier, but I am going to take this off because I can grow this. We're going to take this thing off, right there, pinch that off, and this is a new plant. We'll put it in the cup, and we'll get to that later. And I'll probably take a couple more off. I don't know if these teeny ones would grow or if it's worth it, but I'll take a couple of them off. This plant is way too big. 
should have been planted a long time ago. I might actually, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to have to get this one buried a little bit more because it should have been planted a long time ago. Now, if it was a zucchini, I would just pop it in there and forget about it. This is a tomato plant. We're going to have to get that in there with this. Might just do it this way, make sure this is in there really good. Okay. Set it in there. Now, would I plant it on a heat wave day normally? No, but this plant so neat. This is just a leaf. Just so needs to be planted so bad. So I want to get it in the ground and I might cover the top with something, some material to shade it when the heat starts later. Okay, you know, I'm going to put some more potting soil in there. I could have gone and gotten something from another tote, but I'm not going to run looking for it. So I'm just going to start backfilling it with potting soil. A lot of people bury it all the way down. I don't do that. You can. You can. I do not. This scooper I made, it's fabulous for watering. And this one is just out of a food container. You take half the leaf off. You don't want the leaves touching the soil, especially in the beginning. That's it. Now good watering. And we're done. Full sun, 36 inch spacing. Okay, I'll remember that. Well, there it is. My goodness, it came quick. The sun, hot. If it struggles, I'll throw, an, I've got an old garden flag I can throw over it and keep it shaded. Right now, we're going to put the stake back in, right in here, so I can see the stake. It is stapled onto a piece of tote lid, so I won't lose it. You know how fast you lose it. This, we're going to go get this right away in the house in water, and it will root. And this one, the new plant, I just have to make sure that I continue to give it water at the base all day today and keep the water in the shade because it will get hot. And with this, I am going to remove this and just kind of stick it here because I want it to concentrate. Any leaves touching the ground, I'm just going to take them off. And I can mulch it pretty soon with either some grass clippings, anything off the ground, some wood chips. And that will help hold and retain water around it. So you can mulch it with whatever you want to mulch it with. You could do shredded paper, but it will just kind of cake up. So it doesn't really, it's not that great. Try to find some leaves or something. And you can mulch your plant and that's it. And we'll see how it does. But the reason I'm taking this off is I want it to concentrate on its new home and setting roots first. I'm only sacrificing, what, about six, seven little tiny tomatoes. And to sacrifice that, I could end up with a nice, healthy plant. I'll leave the little tiny ones right now. If it seems like it's struggling, I'll take that off later. And that's it. That's how easy it is to plant it. And we'll see how it does in a cardboard box. So let's see how the tomato grows in a cardboard box. Hope you enjoyed this. And well, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll see how all the boxes go. Because I think it's going to be really cool. And I'm so excited to have more soil next spring. I'll just shovel this up and fill up some more totes. Maybe I'll shovel it back into a cardboard box. Because I sure do end up with a lot of boxes. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. So here's a tomato cutting I took off from the bottom of this plant. There was a branch when I bought the plant two weeks ago. 
I it fell off and I put in some water and look at that it's loaded with roots so we're going to do the same thing to the one I removed this morning and in a couple weeks I should be able to pop it in a pot or find a nice place and maybe one of the boxes to grow it then I'll have three plants out of one that I bought cool